by Hollis Jefferson. Outside Decker. It's a three. Got it! That right there was Sam Decker in 2015 during his junior season at Wisconsin. In college, he would comfortably find himself making the Big Ten all freshman team. The NCAA all region team, NCAA all tourney team, after taking Wisconsin to two Final Fours. He even had his own 2K player. And after this season, he would solidify himself as a guaranteed draft pick in the 2015 NBA draft. But this is also Sam Decker in his final year in the league. In his six year career, he would play for five teams, never average over six points, make shacks in a four, and simply never find his footing in the league. This isn't an unusual story for the NBA, but for a player that showed so much promise as a college player, no one could have predicted the fall off that he would have during his NBA career. Bouncing around from team to team so early on in your career is very much a sign that this isn't a league for you. He would have some low lights and some flashes of great plays, but those just aren't enough for people to remember. But that would all change when he decided to go to the British Basketball League. Hi, my name is Rotomi. I love basketball. I love to talk basketball. And I hope one day you can share that same love for basketball as I. In his 2014-15 season, after Frank Kaminsky, he was the second option for Wisconsin, where they found themselves ranked first in the Big Ten and third in the nation, with a record of 36 wins and four losses. They would get all the way to the NCAA Finals, but they would fall short, becoming runners-up. Sam was predicted to go mid-first round in the draft. As he was the second option, averaging 14-6 and six while shooting 52% from the field at Wisconsin, their system allowed everyone to eat and everyone to play to their strengths. He would eventually go 18th to an already stacked James Harden Rockets team in order to become the ultimate role player for them. His next few years, though, would be disappointing. Decker would play at the four in a positionless run and gun offense in his first year, shooting threes and playing positionless basketball. For the rest of his career, we would see pick and pops, spot up threes, no ball handling duties, backdoor cuts, and Decker would describe that as putting a handicap on his ability to play ball. Over his five years in the league, he averaged 5.4 points per game on five field goal attempts and averaged 15 minutes per game. He spent two years in Houston and that was because they believed in him. But from a development standpoint, playing in a hardened centric offense is going to stunt your growth, especially when you're a rookie trying to get used to the league. Nothing would change as he went from team to team. And that was reflected in the stats. We never really saw anything come from his time on the court. He had a decision to make. When he didn't get the game time that he wanted on the court, he decided that he was going to play internationally. One with a Russian team called Locomotive Cuban, who would play in the Euro Cup, where he saw more game time and touches of the ball. Then, he eventually played for the Telecom Turkey, where he would take on the second option role once again. And although playing well and averaging 15 points per game while shooting 47% from free, his team just wasn't good enough. For a player that wanted to get back to his college ways of winning, playing for a team like Telecom Turkey wasn't going to bring him as much joy as he would have wished for. He wanted to be surrounded by players that were elite. He decided to sign with the Toronto Raptors. He would play for their G League team, but whilst he played for the Toronto Raptors, he only played one minute in one game. And he would finish his season back overseas in the Turkish League. So after going international and then back to the NBA and then back Euro again, you would think that his career is it's probably on its way down. It's probably over. He's never going to go back to a competitive team. He made a move to London, which he described as a leap of faith. Somehow, the GM found a way to relate to Sam as they were both from Wisconsin. He managed to persuade him. He sold him on the dream of becoming the spark that would grow British basketball. The Lions weren't a respected team though, and people thought it was a joke. A simple opportunity for him to go abroad, make some quick cash, and go elsewhere. They just weren't a team that were ever going to even compete in the Euro Cup, neither in the Euro League. Sam stepped into the leadership role that they wanted him to play, and they played through him. But the story doesn't end there. Sam changed things. In his first season, we saw an unrecognizable player, averaging 19, 6, and 3. Here we saw Decker bringing the ball up the court, playing a different style from before. We saw him in post-ups, which were unheard of in his hardened era of basketball, and a fearlessness that allowed us to see the flashes of the NBA, watching him get into the lane and finish at the rim relentlessly. And although we have seen some shooting struggles, Sam started to create moments that his team needed, in order to help them win games. Even argue that his time playing in the league at the four, he was surrounded by elite company. 
And that was all building him for moments like this. In the NBA, he had to keep his skills sharp. And when he got to the BBL, the guard skills that he had practiced in the off season were finally at play. Navigating through pick and rolls and also dealing with the switches as a role man. Switching onto the guards, but also switching onto the centers, he still found a way to make it work. This season, we saw Sam hit this three. One quick thing, I can tell that you like this video. And if you do, please subscribe. It allows me to keep pushing out this content and getting more stuff done for you. Uh, but anyway, I'll let you get back to the video. Now, this is the unrecognizable play I'm talking about. In the NBA, we would have never seen an opportunity like this. He was a go-ahead player. He is a player that gives his team an opportunity to go into overtime and fight for the win. Last season, we watched him lead his team to most wins in Lions history. Finishing first in the league, he would also win MVP lead them to two championships which had never been done before before that season they had never ever won a playoff cup and a bbl cup in the same season and furthermore most importantly he would help them qualify for the euro cup decker re-signed with the lions and although he has battled injury this season nothing has really changed he has handled the ball less though as they've got a new guard signing but this hasn't stopped them from running offense through him his impact is noticeable and they are currently one of the best teams in the Euro Cup and on their way to winning a back-to-back -back title in the BBL. Let's look at the bigger picture though. His effect has been more than just stats and accolades. Whether he is starting or coming off the bench since his injury, he is still playing with a purpose that seems bigger than him. There has been a transformation since all that he has achieved. The stadium went from not selling out to selling out on a weekday when the Lions play a lower tier BBL team. The games are a showcase of basketball talent and the experience of the fans means something to the front office. The team and the games are a product that the front office care about. This is bigger than the Lions have ever been before. You find people like Maya Jammer in the crowd or K-Trap performing. This is a sign of better times. I think one thing we can take away here is that this highlights the role that the NBA plays in the world. How they can directly be responsible for the growth of international leagues by outsourcing their talent. What if the NBA had a program where they would export players to different leagues in order to develop a country's basketball rather than kicking players to the curb? The NBA is the best league in the world and their talent may not shine in America, but there is an opportunity for them to shine and become a catalyst for basketball development in another country. As the saying goes, one man's crap is another man's gold. And Sam Decker very well might be the reason that children of tomorrow in the UK play basketball for the rest of their lives. Thank you very much for tuning in in this video. As you can see, I have a new mic. I'm very interested to hear your comments. If you did enjoy this video, please like, and I will be seeing you in the next video.